Everyone's right. The cycle's beginning. She's going back into crazy town, and I got a goddamn first class ticket. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Gaining Ground. Before I begin this video, just a reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so by clicking on the subscribe button down below. See this? I haven't put my mouth next to anything dirty in a very long time, so I know exactly what this is from. I have named this cold sore Chantal because I am convinced it sprouted after that damn shepherd's pie ketchup fiasco i am pretty sure that that was just the icing on the cake and after multiple videos of her foodies deranged insanity i got a stress blister on my lip so i'm switching it up today and i'm doing an amber lee video amber lynn reed video reaction I haven't done one in a while i figure let's see what she's up to now i will give her credit where credit is due when she said she was done doing mukbang, she hasn't done one since. I know she's been to a casino. Uh, I don't know. She did something else. I wasn't paying attention. Her latest video is called a Denial and Delusion. Now, I know what she's been in denial about, what she has been in denial about. And I know she sometimes acts like she's delusional. But I'm curious to see if she's going to finally admit what we've all been thinking. I don't know. So we're going to watch this. We're going to get a break from Foodie. Hopefully this will heal during this video. Hopefully Amber Lynn comes at me with some healing properties. Um, and just going to, like I said, switch it up going back to Maroon. So come along with me. Let's see what Amber Lynn Reed is up to. Here we go. Hey guys, so welcome to the video. So I'm... I kind of missed that. Hey guys. I'm using my camera, which I haven't done in a little bit. This is actually the first time I've ever used my camera without a tripod. Because I feel like when I'm like... I feel like nobody cares. Now... Two observations right off the bat. She's in that room where she set up all her makeup. If you remember that I made that video where she was like really excited about her makeup uh, organization skills. She had like a crystal meth brush holder. She had some I Dream of Jean perfume bottles on top of her red velvet cake uh, stands. I didn't understand any of it, but I said, hey, it's better than drugs. She's keeping herself busy. She's there. The makeup is there, but she's got none on because she's pasty as hell. So I'm not sure what the point of that was. And number two... I am digging the Morticia Adams shirt. Filming and stuff. I have this huge tripod that I hold. Um, it's really annoying. Whenever you guys see me say... I also enjoy it when she does videos in a spacious room. As opposed, you know, where they she normally is. Inside of like a shoebox. Where the camera's like right up there. And she's like eating the camera. This is very nice to see space around her again. Oh, I can't find my tripod. It's because I'm using my phone. But right now I'm actually using my real camera. I just figured it's time to bust out this baby again. I go back and forth. So the reason why I'm filming this video, I literally just woke up. I'm sure you guys can tell because there's a certain way people look when they first wake up. I just really wanted to film this video. So that's why she put no effort into her appearance because she woke up. So there's this channel that I have been watching for a long time now, almost when they first uploaded their first video. So I've been following this person. I was watching them for, you know, weight loss reasons and this and that. And then they started making videos about me. It was very, it was honestly sad. I'm gonna be honest because- Who is she talking about? I looked up to this person. I like them as a YouTuber and stuff like that. And then I was like, oh no, another person wants to make YouTube videos about me. And it's like, a part of me wanted to stop watching this person completely. But then I was like, but I've, I've grown to like them. And it was like this weird conflicting thing in my- brain and I just I continued watching them and I try my hardest not to watch the videos that they make about me but it's like I kind of can't stop myself from watching if she doesn't tell me who this is I'm gonna be so pissed off um I love to hear their opinion or whatever so the video they uploaded today I I'm hurt by so there are some things regarding the video that I want to answer talk about maybe make people understand because I feel like if this one person feels this way then I'm sure a lot of people feel this way or have these questions and <sighs> It's, it's almost like she was like, oh, no, um, nobody cares about my casino trips or my clothing hauls or whatever she was doing. It's just she's just what is she doing? Like, she's still trying. She, it's like, don't you're not fooling anybody, Everlyn. Like, you love when people make videos about you. Come on. You're not fooling anybody. I don't want it like that because this person called me a liar. They said that I've been lying about being bedbound and not being bedbound and like all this stuff. And it was just 
really weird and it really hurt because i really opened up in my last video and i know a lot of people appreciated it and i know oh, i must have missed a good video damn it i gotta keep up with these crazy bitches a lot of people didn't give a care which is totally fine everyone's different the first and foremost thing that i want to say is being in denial and lying are two completely different things mm, no they're not i mean oh that, that's a slippery slope okay if you have a family member who's sick and you don't want to accept that and you act like they're not sick, okay, you're in denial. But if you start a weight loss channel and you eat 45,000 pounds of food on camera and you're convinced that it's going to help you lose weight, you're in denial and you're a liar because you know you can't lose weight that way. I mean, is that my making sense? I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but no, I don't know. I am slash was in denial. I mm, probably used the wrong word there. I think what the word we're looking for is, well, I guess you should say am slash was. I would have got I would have got rid of the slash was part. I was in denial that I was bed bound. There are reasons why I didn't think I was at the time, and there are reasons why I understand that I actually was. A big, big thing though, was I was in denial. The best part about losing weight and really focusing in on what matters to you and learning about your body and... So now she's a weight loss expert. See, now she's getting on my damn nerves again. The best thing about losing weight, you can't talk like this when you haven't been losing weight. I mean, maybe you've lost a little bit of weight, that's great, but I mean, that's like losing two pounds and then going on a uh, a book tour. I'm re I lost two pounds, I'm writing a book about losing weight. I'm gonna tell you how to do it too. No. You need to lose a lot more weight before you start telling me what the best part about losing weight is. Changing your food intake and being more mobile and you have to work on your mental state a lot. And I've noticed that- No shit. Being delusional has been my forte. That has been my jam. Um, Cause you make, you get views from it and you make money. I have been completely just like delusioned by all this stuff that I feed myself instead of really opening my eyes to reality. And the reason why I said that I'm probably still in denial on some things is because I probably am. Something I've noticed by watching a lot of weight loss channels and also by diving into my own is that a lot of us... I don't know if you have a weight loss channel yet. I mean, I mean, I guess by name or reputation, you may have a weight loss channel, but I'm not sure you currently have one. You might have had one maybe eight years ago for like a day are kind of delusional like when you gain a pound one week you come up with all these excuses or if you only lose a pound you come up with all these excuses when honestly i don't think people are flat out lying i, I would like to hope not but it's like we are in denial to ourselves i recently watched a what i ate today video by someone i've been following for so long and everything in their video was super healthy and i was like okay then wouldn't they be smaller so i started to be a viewer that i the viewers that i have because you guys see me film what i ate today videos like recently i did a what i ate today on if she says it again but you don't see what I eat off camera. I'm going to bang my head into the desk. Okay, I probably won't really do that because that would be stupid. But I feel like that's where she's going. She always likes saying that. You guys only see what I eat on camera. You don't see what I eat off camera. Maybe I'm wrong. Instagram. And all my food was really well portioned and that's what I ate that day. But there's a question of when some of us are filming what I ate today videos, are we in denial of what we truly eat? And are we subconsciously trying to show a healthier, more, oh, small... If you do that, you're lying portioned type of meals because subconsciously we are in denial of how much we eat in a day and the reason why i brought that up is because the person later took to instagram and admitted you know i think i am in denial because normally i wouldn't eat that healthy and this person subconsciously ate healthier so i feel like being in denial can go so many different sort of ways but i just want to let everyone know that i'm pretty sure denial is cut and dry you're in denial but you're also a liar i mean i don't know what the, what the is she talking about i don't even understand what she's going if i tell you what i ate in a day and i make a video that shows three meals okay but i had 34 so i did not show you 31 of them i'm a liar because if the video is called what i ate in a day but i ate way more than what i'm showing you i'm a liar if i made a video called part of what i ate in a day then I'm what the hell is she talking about? Denial, lie. That's lying. There's nothing denial about that. But I did not lie. Hundred thousand million percent. It's just I had my own delusion, my own thing going on in my brain during the time where I was not that mobile. I did not make that unknown. You guys saw the mattress in the living room where I then told you guys it's because my leg is constantly hurting and it's easier for me to sit on the mattress. And when I want to hang out with my friends, that's also something else. I would go in the living room, but Becky would bring out a mattress for me, and I would. Oh, I miss Becky.
sit on it. That was not something I was hiding. It was shown in several vlogs. I explained it in a couple. I, I wasn't hiding that. So another thing is I couldn't breathe. I also was not hiding that. That's why I documented some of my exercising and I could only walk for a minute and 16 seconds. Oh, that video was so tragic. I've watched it. She put the camera on the bench. She walked away from the camera. She kind of was trying to do a power walk with her little arms. And then she walked back to the camera and she looked like she was going to die. And it wasn't even like a minute and a half. It was very sad. And then it slowly went up to three minutes and I would even feel myself walking in place and you guys could hear my breathing. I was also not hiding that. I wasn't hiding the fact that I couldn't fit. My you really don't have to hide the fact you're out of breath when you weigh as much as you do. I mean, there are things that come along with that. Like, I'm, let me guess, you probably also have sleep apnea. You probably have high cholesterol. You probably have high blood pressure. I mean, whether or not you talk about it, there's just assumptions that people can make. I mean, yeah, if you weren't out of breath, I think that would be surprising to me. Car park properly, and sometimes I honestly couldn't even get the door to shut comfortably because I would be really swollen from my lymphedema because I was eating too much. Mm, I, I swollen from lymphedema or fat. I mean, come on, come on. I hate when people say, I hate when fat people say they're swollen. I'm so swollen. No, you're fat. And I say that as a former fatter and currently still fat person. I'm not swollen, I am fat. Do I eat things that make me feel bloated or swollen? Correct. But if I can't close a car door, it's not because I had, you know, something salty before the car ride. It's because I'm fat. Sodium, wasn't drinking enough water, just retaining a ton of fluid. I wasn't hiding that either. I talked a lot about how I was so immobile that I feel like if I was more mobile, then my videos would be better, my vlogs would be better because there wouldn't be so many sit down videos. I said that a lot actually, and I said that a lot in Instagram Q and A's because you guys saw a lot of sit down videos for me. You still will continue to see those, but you guys didn't see any videos of me standing or anything. And those are things that I also was not hiding. So it's not like I was hiding this completely different life at all because I was still very open with the struggles that I was having. So when it comes to the- Oh God, what is the point of this video? The word bed bound. I feel like 600 pound life has tainted that word for me. It made me think of bed bound in a certain way that I didn't know. No, bed bound is pretty straightforward. Bed bound means you're bed bound. You, you can't, you are bed bound. You are bound to the bed. There's a bed, you're bound to it. You cannot arise from the bed. You cannot resurrect from the bed because you are bound to the bed. If you can get out of the bed to get yourself to the kitchen and get yourself a snack, you are not bed bound. Again, when I say these things, I was probably just in denial. But at the time, 600 pound life portrayed for me, probably because I didn't want to admit it myself at the time that I was pretty much bed bound, um, how it portrayed being bed I don't think you can be pretty much bed bound. You either are bed bound or you're not. You either constipated or you're not. You are either have a fever or you don't. You have a runny nose or you don't. You have diarrhea or you don't. You have a headache or you don't. You are either bed bound or you are not. Am I wrong? Am I being insensitive? If you can get out of the bed, you are not bed bound. If you are paralyzed but you can't get up from your wheelchair and walk away from your wheelchair, you are not paralyzed. Am, am I am I crazy? Down to me was you had to have your significant other or pay a friend to come bathe you and literally physically you had to be helped to walk around and you just literally could not get up like at all. Like you spent 24 hours a day in your bed. That was it. Point blank period. Couldn't move. So I, I, I mean, I, that's what I thought it was. I, I, is it not? I mean, maybe I should go to the Goog. Maybe I'm being ignorant. I kind of want to explain the reasons why for, you know, over a year, I consistently said, I don't think I'm bed bound. Again, delusion was in the mix of this, but these are the reasons why I... Wait. So she didn't think she was bed bound. So did she spend a year in her bed? Did she ever get out of the bed? If she got out of the bed, she was not bed bound. So is, is she trying to justify... She's justifying her lies. Is that what I'm... So she told people she was bed bound and she wasn't. And now she's going to explain... Is this what she's doing? She's explaining, oh, well, I thought bed bound meant I'm only in bed 80% of the time. So I, what does she do? What, what, what I, uh, maybe I should have stopped with Foodie Beauty. I was like, no, I'm not bed bound. And I kept telling myself I wasn't over and over and over. The chores were really hard for me, but it didn't stop me from doing them completely. If I was sweeping, you guys, it was almost pathetic. I Wait a minute. Okay. She was in denial. So I think she's saying she was never bed bound. And people said she was bed bound. And I think she's now trying to accept the fact. I think she's now saying, you know what? You were right. I was bed bound. But I was in denial about not being bed bound. 
Sometimes I would sweep the floor. Did she sweep the floor from the bed? Because if she did not, she was not bed bound. I, oh shit. Would probably sweep for utmost 20 seconds, sit down. Sweep for 20 seconds, sit down. Out of the bed, so you were not bed bound. I can't believe I'm talking about being bed bound for this long. 20 seconds, sit down. If I was doing the dishes, I was sitting down. If I was cooking, I was sitting down. If I was wiping down the counters, I was sitting down. Then you were sit bound. If I was doing anything, I was sitting down. It doesn't matter what it was. I was always sitting down when doing any sort of chore. But because you're big as hell. When you, are, you are big, when you are this big, when you are big as hell, you have to sit down all the time. I mean, of course you were sitting down. Look at you. You're big. Earth to Amberlynn Reed, you are big. Shit. Like, what? why is this so confusing for her? Oh, and I'm losing my voice again. Oh, God. Between Chantal and my lip and my lost voice. Maybe I need a break from this garbage. In my head, I was like, I'm still doing chores which aren't in my bed, so that makes me not bed bound. So correct. Your head, for once, your head was correct. And I don't know what, what you, where you're going with this. And maybe, like I said, I need to Google the word bed bound. But if you were sweeping the floor, I don't care if it was for 10 seconds, You, if you were on your feet sweeping a floor, you were not bed bound. Did you have to sit because you big? Yes. Okay, you weren't paralyzed. You didn't have a debilitating stroke. You were just big and got tired. That's not bed bound. A big thing for me is when I imagine or when I imagined someone as being bed bound, I imagine them not being able to shower. And this is like a constant topic on my channel is like, can she shower? Can she wipe herself? Does Becky help her with these things? Point blank period. No, no. And she never has. I think it's. Does she have like a big old bucket in the back? How she lays it. Oh, wait, that was I think you have an episode of Mexico Japan Life. Or maybe she has a swimming pool or something. I, somebody did a video where she climbed into a swimming pool. And they said that that was her bath. And I took that literally. Maybe they were just making a joke. And I didn't realize that. More so like a pride thing within myself. It's almost like no matter how hard it got, I did not want help. Because it made me feel like less. I mean, woe is me. Woe is you, the victim. Oh, I didn't want any. I mean, you did this to yourself. So I'm glad that you didn't want the sympathy or the help. Because you're not. You're not sick in the sense of sickness, that the way I think of sick. You just big. You big. You embarrassed about being big. I get it. I would be too. I was. I am. I'm not as big as I used to be, but I still could be smaller. When I want somebody wiping my, my booty, no. When I want somebody scrubbing my taint, no, I wouldn't. So I get it. But let's not lie about it. You, you weren't bed bound. You used big. Than a person like I didn't even feel I would I just wouldn't feel human at that point if I was having my own girlfriend wipe my butt for me so yes I still and, and not I mean imagine at this age where you have nothing I don't want to say physically wrong with you you don't have any disease you just big I like like just imagine at this age where you need someone to wipe your butt not because you you've fallen down a flight of stairs or because you had an aneurysm you're just big showered but the thing is i could not wash my hair and my body on the same day so i told myself well you're able to wash your body even though it hurts and you have to take a million breaks you're able to do it you're able to wash your hair even though it hurts and you have to take several breaks and you have to hurry up in the shower because you're literally dying because you're fat i, I what, oh god what is she oh right in there you're still doing it like a normal person you're literally in the shower so that's another reason why i was like no of course i'm not bed bound there were times that i like correct and you for once amberly reed you were right and i mean uh, maybe i just i should get my phone and look up bed bound bed bound adjective unable to leave one's bed for some reason so you were not bed bound if you could leave the bed you were not bed but you were the medical definition confined to bed bed ridden Okay, which means you be getting your coochie wiped down in bed, you be getting your butthole wiped down in bed, you be getting your hair, you be sponged down in bed, you be fed in bed. You were not bed bound. So she's justifying something she, oh God. So, so okay, so she's saying, I never thought I was bed bound. You all thought I was bed bound, but now I'm assigned to accept I was bed bound. But bitch, you were never bed bound. So I don't, I don't know. This is the twilight zone. I feel like I've, I feel like I've taken acid. My, I, I, what the f is this? I, I mean, I really thought Fruity was bad. I'd rather watch her eat a damn shepherd's pie with ketchup. No, actually, no, I wouldn't. I lied. At the house, you guys saw that. Like you guys have been on my channel for I don't know how long. So you guys did see me during that time where I was bed bound. 
delusional in um where i was bed bound i would leave the house and it wasn't a lot that's okay agoraphobia i think that's the right one you can't leave the house because you're terrified of leaving your house that don't mean you're bed bound you're house bound she she got out of bed she wasn't bed bound <laughs> Amberly Reed, if you see this, you were right. You were never bed bound. Ever. Not during the period you're speaking of anyway. I, obviously not. I mean, I still don't leave the house a lot now. Like I do, it's grocery shopping, dates here and there, see friends. I don't have this big glorious life, but back then I, I wouldn't leave the house that much. Maybe once a month. Uh, not bed bound. Twice a month. And you know, I would go to holidays with Becky's family. How could you leave the house even once a month or go to holidays with Becky's family and ever, th and ever now, and now look back in that and say, you know what? Maybe I was bed bound. Bitch, you were not bed bound. Oh my God. I wonder how many times I've said bed bound in this video. If somebody wants to count it, let me know. And we would go on dates, but I would say probably like a date would probably be once every two months, which is not good because I feel like in a relationship, you need to have that like, date moment and of course you can have the dates inside your house i'm not saying you can't do that but sometimes it's nice to go out whether it be that would be called sex see a movie grab lunch whatever so i also convinced myself well i do leave the house sometimes and people who have been bound literally can't even fit in a car even you don't have to convince yourself of that that would be a correct statement because when you're bed bound you are confined to the bed semicolon bedridden medical term pull it up I, I don't know if she's really, I, I don't know. I don't know what she, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. It does hurt. Like I said, 600 pound life, like warped. People who are bedridden would love to get in the shower even if it hurts. They physically can't get out of bed. You were in pain in the shower because you big, big. You weren't bed around. You were big my brain and i'm not saying it's their fault it's my fault because i was in denial and i would compare myself to these people all the time and it's like i would see these people who were bed bound like they had to put mattresses in the back of a car and they had to lay on them and no no that's not what bed bound means that means you are so big so big that when you're traveling to houston to see dr now you physically cannot be in a backseat comfortably, so they have to put a goddamn mattress in the trunk of the car just so you could sprawl out and be comfortable for a 10 hour car ride. That is not bedridden, that is fat. They couldn't fit in the seats of the car and it's like, I kept telling myself, well, I can fit in the seat, I can fit in the passenger seat. Yeah, it hurts to close the door, but that doesn't mean I'm bed bound. I even went to Lexington Correct. and vlogged it. Correct. Um, that was during the time where I was working as hard as I could on becoming more mobile. So I thought by staying in a hotel, okay, I kind of sort of have to walk down the long hallways and I have to stand in the Correct. If you were bed bound, you'd never be able to make it to a hotel. Elevator, and I have to walk through the big lobby, and I have to wait for the valet to give us our car and all this stuff. So I thought it was a good way for me to be mobile while also being lazy and eating whatever food I wanted because when I went to Lexington, I was a glutton. It was really bad. You guys saw that video because I did a what I ate on vacation video, but that was when I was trying my hardest to also work on my mobility. So hold on. So I think what I just heard her say was, y'all saw me on that video where I ate a small village. But keep in mind, that's during the same time I was trying to work on my mobility. This is, that's almost as stupid as when she said, I think I'm going to join a gym, but I want to get more active first and lose weight. I think I used the hotel of like, oh, I'm going to like walk in the hotel as an excuse just to eat. But again, denial, denial, denial. It's just part of, I feel like it's a big part of why people get the weight that I am or was. But since I, I went to Lexington and I was able to sit in the car for two hours and this and that, I was like, people who are bed bound can't do that. I would. Correct. And you were correct. 100% correct. Do my makeup. I would do my hair. I would put on cute outfits. I would do on try on hauls. I would do all these things. And I convinced myself bed on people cannot do that that is correct you convinced yourself of reality god she's she's everyone's right the cycle's beginning she's going back into crazy town and i got a goddamn first class ticket so you guys these are the reasons where i was like of course i'm not bed bound hi you know it was not me lying who are the stupid bitches out there trying to convince this heifer that she was bed bound who stop messing with this woman's brain she's fragile and i don't want people to think that at all i was delusional I was in denial. Like those are like the, the pivotal words of this video. So again, being a liar and being in denial are two completely different things. 
I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna go there again. Just, just hurry the, hurry up and finish this goddamn video. And I guess I should have like explained myself better, but you know, I was like cooking my food and I was just like super happy that I was able to, you know, do Racking it. up my views. Do it without keeling over. So there are some questions I want to answer that the person kind of mentioned in the video. I have them written down before me. So why now say you're a bed bound and can you explain more of the timelines? Because I know- Because she wasn't. Notice when they were talking, the timelines were getting kind of messed up, which I'm really bad at timelines too. So I'm not afraid to admit that. So my biggest- time of being bed bound you know what i also want to explain the reason why i'm calling it bed bound now is because in actuality probably down to the definition in actual in actual al in actual actuality I, I was bed bound no you were not you just said you went on a goddamn road trip at the time i didn't think i was because the delusion whatever no you were right for once in your life for once in your life you were right and you've actually convinced yourself that you were wrong for once in the life she was right and she's convinced herself she was wrong. Oh. But I was. So I'm glad that I was able to admit that to myself. And after I was able to admit that to myself, I was able to talk to you guys about it. So that's why it's taken me some time and this and that. But 2018 is when it was at its peak. When I stayed in the bed most of the time. I lay Most of the time. There's no asterisk with the word bedridden. It was hurting really bad. Like, had no idea what was causing it. You had no idea why your body hurt. None. Come on. Come on. Am I getting punked? And that is when it was literally at its peak. 2019 is when it slowly stopped because my leg wasn't hurting as bad. And I was during that time when my leg stopped hurting. You know what if you're a lot of who are bedridden for like serious reasons and like literally bedridden. If I was actually bedridden and I saw this video, oh, I would like strangle her. Okay. Like, I mean, people out there literally cannot get out of bed. Like they're just bedridden. And she's like, well, I didn't think I was bedridden because I got in the car and I went on a vacation. I mean, they would love to get out of their damn bed and go on vacation. And well, shut up. Just shut up. Is this video almost over? Hold on. Oh, God. There's still a long way to go. That is when my lymphedema got really bad. Oh, we talked about the lymphedema. It's a big old ball sack in your leg. And it just started growing more and more, which made me not want to leave the house. I didn't want to do anything because I was so embarrassed. And it's like... Does it mean embarrassment does not equal bedridden? I'm just to the point where I'm, I have to accept it because lymphedema is not something that is it can go away. Um, it can get smaller with weight loss, and that's a big pivotal moment where I'm really focusing on that. So once my legs started feeling better, my lymphedema was growing. I still like did not have any stamina. You guys saw that for yourself because I documented a lot. You're big of walking in 2019. You guys saw that. So that is when I was trying to work on my mobility, which I'm sure you guys noticed. And it was towards two, it was towards the end of 2019, obviously, where it started to get better because I started to work harder at it. So why I say that I'm bedbound now? It's and it's shocking that you you are saying that as you worked towards being more physically active, it got easier. I mean, mind blown. Because all of this has been a process. It's a process that I have went through behind closed doors. Me Gone through. I have gone through. Having to admit these things to myself. And after admitting them to myself, working through the emotions, of course I want to share that with you guys because that is a big part in my journey. And I just, I don't want to glorify just, you know, the happy parts like, oh, look at me, I'm able to walk. Or, oh, look at me, I'm eating an apple. <laughs> like, it's stupid. Like, I want to be able to tell you guys like, hey, um, I used to only be able to wash my body and my hair like on separate days because I couldn't do it in the same day because I was too big. Imagine if you had actually done a weight loss channel like you said you had were going to do eight years ago where you'd be say you'd be washing your own hair washing your own coochie you'd be washing between your boobies i mean you'd be doing a lot of washing right now you'd be quite the you'd be quite the um example for people who want to wash themselves and can't and i like couldn't breathe and, I and people who want to watch themselves not running out of breath i mean just imagine if you had committed yourself wasn't too much pain you know what i'm saying like i want to be able to talk about those things with you guys so uh, another question is why lose weight now what made you want to lose weight now and i feel like it's kind of a silly question Mainly because it's like, I've always wanted to lose weight for the same reason. Enough is enough. I don't want to die. Point oh, please, please. Somebody get Maury in a goddamn lie detector test in here. Like period. Th those things have always been my reason. And I feel like they should be everyone's reason. Like you want to live a long, healthy, happy life. But oh. wanting and doing are two separate things, obviously. Just because I wanted to lose weight so bad for these reasons, something just has to click. I, how I always imagined it is like- How long like, does this click take? It's the longest click in the, with the history of clicks. Like there's a little, like little screw in your brain. And you don't have that screw. I'm pretty sure it fell out. And it's just chilling in there. It's trying to find, you know, the spot where it's supposed to belong. And you try all these little diets and this and that. And like nothing ever clicks. And then all of a sudden the screw goes right where it belongs. And it just clicks right, right in it. Did she read a self-help book this last weekend? <laughs> I mean, what is she talking about? This place 
and somehow you're just like, this is it, this is the time. You guys, I'm gonna be 30 this year. In December, I'm gonna be 30. I you know what, nothing, never mind. I, 30 to me used to be so old. Like, I used to think, oh my God, 30 is so old. And now that's gonna be me. And it's like, the only way I- Think about how healthy you could have been by 30 if you had started your journey when you said you were gonna start. You'd be 30 and fabulous. And said you're a 30 and I don't even know. And with my Tisha Adams pasty skin. We'll see my 40s as if I do it now. I completely wasted my 20s. You sure did. But do I also want- You sure did. I'm gonna open, I'm gonna call this video the Great Awakening of Amber Lynn Reed. I waste my 30s because I only see myself getting worse if I don't do it now. So that's why. Are we taking bets? Is she gonna be doing this video when she's almost 31? It's clicked finally. I'm almost 31 this year and I decided I need to click and I don't wanna live this way in my 31 year. And then I'll do the same thing, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And then she'll be like me. I'm turning 40 next year. I really wanna get healthy for 40, except the difference is I'm actually doing it. Another thing that they mentioned is that when I talk about my lymphedema or when I talk about being bedbound, I seem to laugh. Which you never were. While I do it. I take it lighthearted, supposedly, and stuff like that, which I actually understand because I don't notice that I do those things. Like I do the, like a little chuckle or like a little giggle after certain things that I say that are serious topics. And I don't even notice it until I'm either A, editing my video, or B, people are pointing it out to me. So that just indicates I really honestly think that it's like a habit, a nervous habit, because that's thoroughly the only thing I can think of. Because while I'm talking about these things, I don't think it's funny. Obviously, I do not find humor in me being bedbound, immobile. You were not bedbound. Well, lymphedema, my health in general. So I really honestly think it's just a nervous habit. So if I offend anyone while I'm doing that, please just don't take it to heart. Like I, I don't even notice I'm doing it. See, the thing is, you guys didn't see the tears, the anxiety attacks, me feeling just completely trapped and miserable and you guys didn't see that part i didn't show that part because of several different reasons a i didn't want to be that vulnerable b it's like i get told i do crocodile tears a lot which i have never faked cried on camera i've never faked cried in person i don't know how i don't know how people do it like good job actors and actresses because i'm definitely not stealing your paycheck because i can't do it so sometimes it's easier to not be super vulnerable on camera when it comes to things that are like really deep because people call you liars Oh my God, this video is a potpourri of crazy. So you're doing it for views, this and that. So you guys didn't see all of the craziness regarding that. Oh, we see it. We see enough. So I feel like maybe also when I talk about these things, I'm a little not. I was hoping she was going to come on this video and be like, listen, listen. I've been lying for years, trying to get some views. But I decided in January, you know what? I'm a better success than I am a failure. And boom, here's the scale. I've lost 40 pounds behind the scenes. I would have been like, but no, I, I, it's just, I don't know what the f she's talking about. Like, I'm proud that I'm no longer, you know, super immobile. I'm not out here, you know, running five miles, but I'm also able to do things I wasn't able to do before. So it shows growth. Like what? Tell us. And I just think that I spent so much time crying and just everything just like flooded in at once that I just feel like I, I don't feel the way I used to about it because I've worked on it off of camera. So if you guys don't see me being emotional about it or you guys see me just being nonchalant, it's not because I'm nonchalant or don't care or whatever it may have you. It's because I've already worked on this and I did it off of camera. So this person also was questioning if I ever was truly higher than 572.4, which is my highest weight because- 572.4, oh my God. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't, oh God, I hope I never find out. Because they were saying, well, since she was bedbound, she should have gained more weight. She was not bedbound. How did she only stay at that weight? That doesn't make any sense. There is a certain point um, of calories that your body needs to maintain. There we go. There we go. She's a, she's like fucking doctor again. Maintain a weight. Clearly, I was staying around those calories because I honestly, I wouldn't weigh myself for, I feel like weeks. I didn't go any further than that usually because I was really worried that I was going to reach 600 pounds. And every time I weighed myself, it was never higher than 572.4. So I think when it comes to my binging and my calorie consumption, I never went past that limit. Oh, I find that hard to believe. I just do. Of gaining weight, if that makes sense. So I'm just throwing numbers out of my head because I truly don't know. Let's say 6,000 calories a day is what keeps you at 570 pounds. So obviously I wasn't going over that. And if I was, the next day I probably was only eating 4,000. So it made me balance on the 570s and every time i step on the scale no matter when it was 572.4 was never bypassed and i get questioned so much about that 
So, I mean, you could have been past that number, but since you didn't weigh yourself for weeks, you could have then lost a little bit to go under that number and then gotten right above that number. So I, you can't definitively say, definitive, definitive, definitively say you were never higher than that number because you don't know. And it's like, you guys, I've lost weight now. Don't you think that I would... You're saying that a lot. Where is the scale? How much have you lost? And if it's a video, the one of the last two videos where she weighed herself, then let me know. I haven't caught up with her because, like I said, I've been so obsessed with the other crazy. So if she has lost weight, if she's proven it, let me know in the comments below. Love more than anything to be like, I am down way more weight, actually, because I was higher than 572.4. Like, I'd love to throw that in people's faces and just be like... I so I think she's saying, I wish I was actually fatter than I am. So I could now say I've lost more than I have. Oh, God. I've lost more weight than only so-and-so pounds. Like, I would love to do that. So another question they ask is, did I ever have sores on my legs? No. That is something that when I watch 600 Pound Life, I question, like, why didn't I ever get those things? Like, Oh, shut up, woman. I don't ever get random sores on my body just randomly or anywhere. Uh, I, no, come on. You're five. Yes, you do. <sighs> yeah, come on. Come on. You have to. Your body's that big. Your skin is that stretched out. You're getting something a boil, a sore, something. Big stomach. Like, it doesn't even matter. If I have a sore, there's a reason. Um, I'm sure if you guys have been around long enough, you guys know that I have an issue. Like, if I get a cat scratch, I cannot stop picking it. Or if I get a mosquito bite, I'll itch it so much that it turns into a scab and then I can't stop picking it and then it gets bigger and bigger. I'm sure you guys have been around for all that. But I've never had a random sore just pop up on my body ever. I mean, they I'm don't just pop up. They, they appear because you're very big and immobile. It's not just... They don't just appear. It's not like a pimple. Oh, I got a pimple on my face. Oh, I got a sore on my ass. No, you got a sore on your ass because your ass is sitting in one spot for so long, the skin can't breathe. I mean, I don't have the scientific sore conditions of how sores appear, but usually it's because you're not active and your body is big. You big. You big. I'm telling you, if that was to ever happen, I would probably get freaked out. So it's weird to see so so many people on 600 pounds. I'm not surprised. You you tried to make us all think you were dying because your vitamin D was low. I can imagine if you had a sore. Well, a sore that you admit having. I get that. I don't know what that is. Like, drop dead serious. So in the video, they also asked, how much time do you spend in your bed now? Before I go to sleep, I would say, I want to say about five to four, four to five hours, I'm in my bed. And it's before I go to sleep. And during that time, Four to five hours. So if let's say you go to bed at 11 or 12, six or seven. I'm, I'm editing. I'm talking with Becky and that's like our time to like talk together and hang. You can't talk outside for a walk around the block. I mean, you can't edit at the kitchen table or maybe standing up at the kitchen table. Hang out. Sometimes we'll play games or just like talk about our day or talk about life. Or talk I cannot imagine laying. Oh, I lay on I lay on my couch for longer than an hour. My back starts hurt. Could you imagine laying in a bed for six or seven hours? Talk about the freaking Pluto and Saturn. Um, but yeah, that's catch up on YouTube videos, catch up on um shows or read or write. I've been doing a lot of writing lately. Like a lot of people throughout their day. Write in bed. They probably do these things. Like someone might watch two YouTube videos then, but then they do all this stuff and then they sit down and watch a movie and like all this stuff. But I just do all mine in like a collective time and it's always right before I go to bed. That could be a big reason why I have trouble sleeping. So it's something I do need to work on. But yeah, being in my bed for only four hours out of a full day. Only four hours. Sometimes even less than four hours, to be honest, is marvelous. No, it's not marvelous. Oh, God. Maybe I should scrap this whole video and go back to a foodie beauty mukbang. Literally, compared to how I used to be, I would be in bed, sleeping, eating, doing anything. I just, I, that's all it was, was me being in bed. And now when I wake up, I purposely, the first thing I do is I do some chores. That's just what I prefer doing. Um, clean the kitchen, whatever it may be. And then I'll have breakfast. Sometimes I'll get ready first or sometimes I'll have breakfast first. And honestly, it just depends. I'm trying to create a schedule for myself instead of just like going off on the willy nilly. And I will not sit in my bed during the day because it just, it makes me go back to those. Oh, you're so brave. 
times and I don't like it. But when I sit in there at night, I feel a little bit more like, okay, this makes more sense because Eric and Ricky does the same no. thing. We almost split off and go into our rooms at the same time. That's just what feels better to me. And I don't want to sit. Oh, six or seven hour. I mean, I mean, I, <laughs> how do you, how do you even, I can't even comprehend that. You're this big. You could be going for a walk. You could be going to the gym. But she's justifying laying in bed for six hours before bed. Like I said, you go to bed at midnight. You're getting into bed at six. And you're just there until... Like, that's just... That's stupidity. In there during the day. Because I don't want to go back to those bad habits and whatever it may be. So that is pretty much everything that I wanted to like clarify because I truly feel like a lot of people were probably thinking and wondering these things. So hopefully this video made you guys understand a little bit more that I was just very much in denial and I was in delusional land and I'm really trying to work on that part of myself even more. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I mean, I, I really, I'm at a loss. I, I don't know what the hell just happened. I don't, um... I never thought I was in, I never thought I was bedridden because I could get out of bed, but thank you all for convincing me that I was bedridden, even though bitch, you were not bedridden. Um, I lay in bed for six hours and it's wonderful because I'm not laying in bed for eight hours. So that's, that's a win, I guess. I, I don't know what I, 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 she's, she was mobile, but eating like a whore, but she was mobile. So it made sense. I mean, I don't know. God, I'm really regretting this video. I don't know if I'm going to post it. <laughs> I don't understand what just happened here. I'm so sorry if you stayed through this for the end. I don't know. I don't really don't know what happened. I don't know if I just should have watched the two videos before this. But this didn't make any sense. She's... I, I got nothing. Uh, remember, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to it. Uh, it'll alert you every time I upload new content. Uh, like this video. Like other videos. Helps my channel grow. Uh, yeah, and uh, share this and others on, on social media if you want to. I've got links in my description. I'm, again, I'm, I'm, my humble apologies. I'm really sorry I did this to all of you. Until next time.